here. Good afternoon and welcome to the City Council meeting for the City of International Falls for Tuesday, February 19, 2019. I would ask all present to please arise and pledge allegiance to the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I would ask the city administrator to note the roll call with all members of the council present. <clears throat> Move to the agenda. Your pleasure with the agenda. Moved. Motion by Councilor Kraus to approve the agenda. Second. Second by Councilor Deitch. Discussion on the motion or the agenda? Mr. Mayor. Please. Would we need to add an addition to the agenda for the travel expenses for the um, Monday's hearing at legislature? Yes. I, would I, not, I don't believe that we have done that one. Okay. I would make a, uh, an amendment to the motion to add uh, travel expenses for Monday to state legislature to speak on behalf, to testify on behalf of the sales tax. Okay, we have a motion to amend the uh, agenda to uh, approve uh, for uh, city councilors, uh, mayor and city administrator uh, to testify on the sales tax bill for the city of International Falls before the House uh, Local Tax Division Committee. Is there a second to that amendment? Second. Second by Councilor Buller. Discussion? Hearing none, we'll call a question on the amendment. Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. And then to the main motion to approve the agenda. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, any question? Aye. 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 Yes. Motion is carried. Agenda is approved with the addition. And we will consider that under new business. Move to the uh, minutes of the February 4, 2019 meeting. We'll accept the minutes. Motion by Councillor Buller to accept the minutes as presented for the February 4th, 2019 meeting. I have a second. Second by Councillor Kraus. Discussion on the motion or the minutes. Hearing no discussion, question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Minutes are approved. Thank you. We'll move to the resolution on the payment of claims and transfers. And we have uh, transfers to the general fund from the water and sewer funds of $9,951.67 to the Permanent Improvement Fund, $66,666.66. And to the Reserve for Capital Outlay from the Water and Sewer Fund, $25,760.42. Accounts payable claims for the City of International Falls, $291,145.57. Airport Commission claims, $7,892.00. 33 cents. Library board claims of $7,918.51. With pleasure with the resolution approving the transfers and the payment of claims. So moved. Motion by Councilor Droba. Second. Second by Councilor Buller. Discussion on the motion or the resolution?
Hearing none, call the question on approval of the resolution. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Resolution is adopted, approving the payment of claims and transfers. Thank you. Go to the audience. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to approach the council at this time? And we'll uh, have another opportunity at the end. We'll move to um, opening of bids and quotes. And um, we have the quote from BDS Laundry Systems for a washer, extractor, and drying cabinet in the amount of $15,122 plus tax and to Taylor's Plumbing and Heating for a water heater, gas, and plumbing work in the amount of $5,990 plus tax with the total cost payable from the 2019 Fire Department Budget 101 and a grant from the State Fire Marshal of $10,000. Your pleasure with the quote. So moved. Motion by Councilor Krause to approve the acceptance of that low quote and the uh, work by Taylor Plumbing and Heating. Second. Second by Councilor Deach. Discussion on the motion or the quotes that we have before us. Mr. Mayor. Please, City Administrator. Just for clarification, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, I want to point out that the uh, uh, the fire chief did a good job of preparing a lot of background information on this, and I've combined his two memoranda into one action. And as you pointed out, um, one of the quotes was received from BDS Laundry Systems to um, acquire the drying equipment and the washer. Um, this uh, equipment is necessary to wash the turnout gear for the fire department to try and prevent carcinogens um, uh, when they respond to fires and, and are in smoke-filled rooms and that. So it's a, it's a public safety issue. And uh, also as part of being able to put in that washer and dryer cabinet, uh, we need to do some plumbing alterations, uh, some gas lines, and that's being contracted with uh, Taylor Plumbing uh, in the amount of $5,990. And, uh, and then in addition to that, you can see on the first memo there for about $2,500 is about um, some electrical work that the city employed electrician will do. So that's not really part of the quotes, but we're um, estimating that the our own in-house electrician will spend about $2,500 on that work. Again, an important part of this um, quote is that the... Um, funds for it will be, or the expenses will be offset by a $10,000 grant award that the uh, fire chief had applied for and we received through the uh, state fire marshal's office for um, this uh, washer and drying cabinet because uh, they recognize the need to um, protect our firefighters from uh, the higher incidence of cancer which they're experiencing because of these carcinogens. So I just wanted to clarify that there's actually two different companies that are bidding. We've packaged it into this one motion and there's some additional work that we'll do in-house with our local electrician. So if anybody has any other questions of me or the fire chief, uh, Adam Anasa is here if you have some questions of him. Questions on part of the council? I, I have just, uh, does the ambulance uh, EMT department utilize this also in addition to the fire department? Uh, that's not right. The risk of cross contamination from what's washed over the gear onto the ambulance. Not a recommended practice. This would be for, for washing down all of your fire gear or the yep. volunteer uh, firefighters gear. Uh, after a fire? Okay. Councilor Jorba. I just uh, have one other question. If I remember correctly, I believe we set $24,000 aside for the equipment and this gets offset with the grant. So then what, what is there any plans with that additional $10,000 that we have set aside for? Because that was what we set the money aside for was this. I, I 
but I believe the idea was we wanted to move forward with this project regardless. Uh, whether we got the grant or not, we were awarded the grant to offset it. Um, I don't know what the final decision was. I, I understand. I, that, I'm just trying to see where we can tighten up our budgets for next year, and this is one of the things that we had we had looked at that we were definitely going to set the m money aside for for the equipment, and it was discussed and just setting it aside. Expect the difference from if we were to get the grant, and I know we set all of the money aside, so now there's going to be ten thousand dollars setting sitting aside through the course of the year. So. Just wanted to make that point or discuss that. Thank you. City Administrator. Uh, Mr. Mayor, just to clarify, <clears throat> my understanding is you can see as part of the motion that the general fund uh, fire department will be um, where we pull the funds to, to do this work from, and that's uh, capital outlay, I think, other furnishings and equipment. And in that line item, my recollection is we budgeted uh, in the final budget, it was 16400 or $500 total. So this cost, um, after you consider the grant award of $10,000, will be $13,612. So the difference between the thirteen six two twelve and the sixteen five is what would be left in the fire department budget. Um, it's one of the things that I would just point out that this is a good example of, uh, so the grant award is going to come back and be attributable as a revenue source for the general fund but the fire department budget is going to show an expenditure of twenty three thousand six twelve and so we only have sixteen thousand five hundred so really he's going to be over budget on the expenditures and it's not going to reflect in the fire department proper that we got this grant because it just goes in the overall general fund so uh, but in essence the what we'll have spent in his um, capital outlay line item will be the uh, difference between the thirteen six twelve and the sixteen five Thank you. And, and I guess one further question on my part. And would, do we pay sales tax on this equipment that we're purchasing as a city? I don't think so, but I, I can't say for sure. I, I got to look at the, um, you know, Chief, because I don't know. There's, we would, but the state has, has, I know that library expenditures are exempt from paying sales tax. They require a taxes to be paid on the acquisition of other equipment that like for public works department and over various legislative sessions, some of that stuff has been modified. I can't answer specifically if uh, public safety or fire department expenditures are actually subject to paying the sales tax or not without researching it to be certain. Thank you. Further questions or discussion? All right, we have a motion by Councilor Krause and second by Councilor Deach to approve the uh, low quotes and uh, project total of 23612 with a grant award of 10000 from the uh, State Fire Marshal. No further discussion? Call a question. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried and uh, low quotes are approved for that project. Thank you. Move to the uh, consent agenda, and uh, we have uh, just the one item, and that's for the True North Properties LLC, a snowplow license under the consent agenda. So moved. Motion by Councilor Droba to approve the consent agenda. Second. Second by Councilor Kraus. There's no uh, discussion on the consent agenda. Question? Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. Consent agenda is approved. Thank you. Move to uh, new business. Item number one is to uh, request a proposal for upgrading the council chamber's camera and sound system. City Administrator. Mr. Mayor, at the <clears throat> last meeting under other business, uh, Councillor Deach, I believe, had raised some concerns with the quality of our sound system in um, the council chambers and the poor, uh, poor quality when it's rebroadcast on KCC TV or our website. So the staff was directed to prepare a request for proposal to solicit uh, proposals to 
upgrade our sound system as well as uh, to some extent the video system. So I have prepared a request for proposal that you can see and was included in your packet uh, dated February 19th. And I've got a, it's formatted in a way that we have a request for proposal notice and then reference to uh, the full RFP that will be available online for people or through mail. And uh, you can see I've provided some general background on the community in the event that we get non-local contractors to bid on the work and, and need to get here either through the uh, airport or other means. And, and I've laid out the request for proposal or the scope of work that we're asking the contractors to do in three different options. So, and they were essentially trying to get at what we had talked about at the last meeting, and I think uh, Councillor Buller had asked for is that we kind of look at, you know, maybe, a, you know, a basic system, a kind of a medium grade system and a high grade system. And so I've laid out three different options in the request for proposal. Option one is just to upgrade or replace the existing council chamber's audio system only. And that's really where I think the heart of our complaints are is that the audio system and the microphones don't pick up all the conversation. Sometimes there's questions or comments that are cut off or cut out. And, um, and I, I do know that for a period of time, there were some complaints that people couldn't hear me. Well, my microphone had actually fallen and broken. And so we found a backup unit, replaced it. So hopefully that's not a problem. But um, another concern was that uh, we had people that speak in the back of the room. And so you can't always pick that up with our microphone system. So um, we've laid out option one to basically just upgrade or replace the existing council chambers audio system only. Option two would be <clears throat> a request to upgrade the audio and the camera video system. Right now, uh, we pointed out that we have one camera that's fixed on a tripod in the back of the room, and it just views the council table and then these two side tables and anybody who might be at the uh, center table addressing the city council from the back of the room. So you don't get any Zoom features, you don't know who's talking, but um, that's what we have. So. Um, the second option would be is entertaining um, proposals to upgrade the video system in addition to the audio system. And then option three is more of a, um, I'll use the term a Cadillac or an upgraded one. And so we would supplement the option two proposal and actually add to the video system additional features that might include multiple room monitors so that each there'd be a monitor in front of each council member so you could actually see uh, what's being projected on a camera from somebody who's doing a presentation on our audit or if somebody's doing a certificate of survey or has a photo that they want the council to see those could be projected from a camera at a dais so the council can see that and it could also be visible from uh, either tvs or monitors in the council chamber so that the people in the audience can also monitor uh, what's being presented to the city council um, with control boxes and other kinds of features, you can actually include whatever is projected on that camera, can be rebroadcast and put on the recorded version of the meeting. And so if uh, we've got an auditor that's showing us a pie chart of what our expenditures are, for instance, uh, you can hear a person speaking, but you can actually have the visual of what that pie chart looks like so you know what they're looking at, as an example. So option three lays out uh, the additional features and would be uh, something that would be more of an upgraded audio and visual system and uh, offer some um, upgraded resolution and display system for doing maps and those things that I described. So um, those would be the three options that the contractors potentially could bid on and I did it that way so they could quote a price and if the city council is satisfied with option one versus option three, you'll have pricing on all three options. If you think you want to go the um, full spectrum audio visual system upgrade with the camera monitors and stuff and, and the price seems to be a make sense from a cost benefit standpoint you'll at least have options for multiple suppliers for doing that so that's the way i've crafted this rfp and of course it's subject to your review and approval and modifications as however you see fit i would also just point out that the tentative project schedule that i put together here was that we would make the RFP available online and then sent out on uh, tomorrow, February 20th. Uh, we're asking that the proposals be due at about noon on March 12th. 
and then we would evaluate those starting on March 13th. Um, I've left some time where if the City Council wanted to interview consultants uh, to ask questions about their proposal and that could be done anytime the week of March 20th, but that the final contract award uh, potentially could happen on your first meeting in April, which would be April 1st. And then I've reserved about uh, all of the month of April, May and June to complete the work and estimate that the work could be completed on or about June 28th. Um, so that's what I preliminary laid out uh, for the council to consider and there's some detailed information about what the uh, contractor should include in the RFP. Um, to try and illustrate what our existing facilities look like, we've included some attachments that include photos of the council chambers so people kind of see what the configuration, what the lighting's light, like and what the existing equipment looks like uh, so they can kind of get a feel for the age and what we have for an existing system. <laughs> and then uh, uh, Emma was able to come up with some of the specifications for our camera um, recording equipment and the um, uh, speaker microphone system that we have. That's what I prepared for council consideration and uh, anything you think is appropriate to uh, delete or add to the RFP, it's uh, totally up to the council's discretion. Thank you, city administrator, uh, very well done. Um, council's pleasure then with the request for a proposal for upgrading the uh, camera and sound system. Yeah. May I, I'm not, I'm not. We have a motion to approve the for proposal? All, all motion for sake of discussion. Motion by Councillor Krause. All second. Second by Councillor Droba. Thank you. Councillor Droba. Um, my concern with the RFP is number one, it was it's very, very detailed for what I think we're looking for. Um, I I'm thinking that if we leave option three in here, we may get people that are very interested and think that we are in some capacity looking at a Cadillac version. And I don't think that that's what the council was looking for. I think we were looking for an audio system or a camera system with working audio. And if we keep option three in here, we're gonna have a lot of companies that are gonna be thinking that International Falls is looking for a $35,000 system with monitors and everything. And I think we may be wasting some people's time and maybe I've got a wrong idea of what we're looking for. But my concern is legitimately option one and option two, just making sure that the video and sound quality of our of our system works. I, I think option three is unrealistic since this would be an unbudgeted item. Um, I think that that's one of the concerns with the previous city council. Um, I had never sat on a city council that talked about this camera system or audio system, but as I understand the history of it, we had a fairly large proposal that was over $30,000 to upgrade the system. And I think that that's what we're gonna come in at in option three. And I think it may be a waste of uh, a contractor's um, time thinking that if they give option one and option two, they might go with option three where we're re I think we're legitimately looking for option one or option two. So. Um, I would love to listen to the rest of the council, but it would be my goal at some point to take option three out of this RFP. Councilor Droba, uh, option three is over and beyond what we probably need. Councilor Krause. Administrator Anderson, do we, do we have an idea of how much money we're looking to spend? Would it be reasonable? to put a dollar figure on there that this is kind of where we're at so that when they create a bid, they understand how much we're looking to spend. I would hate to throw this out there and have everybody come in even on the high end of one and two if they don't have a realistic idea of how much we're looking to spend. It's just my opinion on the matter. Uh, Aaron, Council, <clears throat> I can't speak to what the uh, estimated cost would be because 
you know, I'm not a technician. I don't work in the field. I know what the electronics field costs. You know, really, if you look at big screen TVs, they just keep going down and down. What you used to pay eighteen hundred dollars for, you can get for eight hundred ninety nine now. Just you know, five years, and it's and the quality is just, you know, just goes up. So, I would be hard pressed in my position to pick a number that would be appropriate. If the council has a better number about all we have available and appropriated to spend on this, then that would be a number. Is that we we can entertain proposals that would exceed X dollars, but I'm. Because it's unbudgeted, I'm I'm really not in a position that I could offer an amount. Yeah. My fear would be that we would receive these proposals, but just not be able to spend mm -hmm. that amount of money, and then we're, as Councillor Droba pointed out, maybe even wasted their time. We're just kind of right back to where we were. So I think it would be reasonable for us to figure out at least how much we're willing to spend, or maybe we go into that later. I don't know. I think on the opposite spectrum, if they know how much we're going to budget, that's what they're going to ask for. Whereas if they have no idea, maybe they'll go over, but maybe they'll be way under also. It's kind of like walking into a car dealership. They know what they want for it, and you know what you want to spend, and you meet somewhere in between there. Makes sense. Go ahead, Councillor Bullock, please. The complaints that we hear from everybody is mainly the audio. I mean, that's all I've heard is just uh, or audio. They can't hear, they can't hear, it cuts out. And that's, I mean, that's the real problem of the whole thing is where it started from right there. So uh, I guess I would agree with you then, too, that we go with the first two and then follow up to. Yes, please. Um, and, and that's my, my concern. I mean, if if it's audio, but to upgrade the audio, you would have to upgrade the the um, camera system. We just don't know that. But I know that to upgrade the camera system and the audio, you wouldn't need to have monitors. You, you know what I mean? And that's just my thought. So um, may, I, may I make an a amendment to the motion? I would make an amendment to the motion to um, remove option three from the RF, RFP. <laughs> I'll second. Okay, we have an amendment to the uh, motion to remove from the RFP option number three, uh, made by Councillor Droba, second by Councillor Deach. Question with regard to the amendment. Uh, Please, Councillor Cross. Administrator Anderson, um, I just want to say thank you for putting this together. I think even though we're taking out an option, it's it's really well written, it's really well put together, and hopefully it's something that we can bring to fruition. So thank you. Thank you. It's uh, you know no harm or no foul. I'm just trying to lay out options, and uh, there's different degrees uh, of. Um, of uh, communications equipment that you can put in, and so that's I appreciate the dialogue, and this this works. You want to get the council what they need and what you want. This will clearly be more cost effective than including option three. There's no question about that. I guess uh, in my discussion, I would just uh, say that I think uh, Councillor Joba. Uh, answered my question by stating that uh, we have not budgeted any money for this and I think that there are definitely higher priorities than uh, than this equipment um, secondly I've had uh, citizens who do not have the uh, cable system and uh, question why their tax dollars should be spent to um, try to improve something on the cable system. So uh, my intent is to uh, to not support uh, the request for proposal. Further discussion? Vote on the amendment then to uh, remove option three. Uh, call the question. Yes. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. We'll go to the main motion to uh, 
approve the uh, request for proposal for upgrading the camera and sound system without option three. Question. Aye. 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 I'll vote no. There being four for the motion and one opposed, the motion carries and the RFP is approved without option three. Thank you. Move to uh, item number two, and that's the uh, appointments to the Emergency Communications Board and the Regional Advisory Committee. Uh, you have that uh, memo from the mayor on those appointments. Um, Councilor Droba has served as the uh, uh, elected official on that uh, communications board and Nathan Myers, uh, paramedic for the city, has been on the uh, Regional Advisory Committee uh, previously also. Your pleasure with those appointments. I so make the motion. Okay. Motion by Councilor Buller, second by Councilor Deach. Yes. Approve the mayor's appointment. Emergency Communications Board and the Regional Advisory Committee. Discussion on the motion or the appointments. Hearing none, the question? Aye. 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 I vote yes. Motion is carried. Appointments are approved. Thank you. Took them both together, so item two and three are complete. And we'll move to uh, item number four, and that's a resolution approving a uh, permit for a one to four day temporary on sale liquor license for the Rotary Club for the annual Cary Park Arena Hockey Tournament scheduled for March 15th through the 17th. So moved. Motion by Councillor Kraus to approve that uh, permit request. Second. Second by Councillor Buller. Discussion? Question. Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. Resolution is adopted and application permit is approved. Thank you. Item number five is to uh, accept the resignation of the Information Systems Administrator effective uh, the end of the day of February 22nd, 2019. Motion with regret. By Councillor Droba to uh, accept that resignation with regret. Second by Councillor Deach. Question on the motion or the resignation. Question. Please. Was there any negative feelings or anything negative why he wanted to resign? I know the little bit dealing I had to do with him, he seemed like he was doing a great job. Mm -hmm. Uh, Council and Mayor, um, the reason for the resignation is that the individual has accepted another position that pays slightly better and it's uh, to do some applications development work at PCA which is what the person's actual degree in computer science is more tailored to and that's what they're kind of near part. So um, that's why he's accepted the position. It wasn't um, for anything that um, wasn't working out for him here or anything like that. I think, uh, you know, he's done IT kinds of stuff. He's helped us with some hardware upgrades and some new computer acquisitions. Was also working to upgrade our uh, software system from Windows 7 to Windows 10, which won't be uh, serviced by Microsoft after January 14th of 2020. So he was working, doing a fine job of, you know, moving us ahead with that. Um, but this other position opened up and it was an opportunity that he didn't feel Questions or discussion? Uh, place the question on the uh, acceptance of the resignation of uh, Mr. Clarity from the IT department. Aye. 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 I would vote yes. Motion is carried. Right. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, please. For informational purposes, <clears throat> then the staff will move forward with. Um, advertising the vacancy and see if we can't uh, get another person or you know we'll seek applications for um, that position and and uh, <clears throat> we'll interview candidates and be making a recommendation to the council as soon as we can uh, it is a 
difficult field to find qualified uh, persons to work in, but um, you know we were able to find uh, Jacob, and he's done a, a fine job. So hopefully we'll be able to find a, a reasonable candidate to fill uh, that position here in the very near future. Please, Councilor Cross. Is there, uh, Administrator Anderson, is there any way to create, to turn it into a contract position where you sign like a yearly contract versus, uh, because in my short time on the council, he's the second IT person. We just hired last fall. So it would be nice to not have the, the turnover. Is there a way to do so? I don't know if there's a way to do that in the charter or not, but. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, I don't think that <clears throat> we've actually had a lot of turnover in that position. Uh, the previous person, it was a half-time position. We did upgrade it to, to full-time, and uh, was it over eight years, ten years, that the gentleman was in that previous position performing those functions for us, and they were both very skilled, uh, uh, had the appropriate skill sets to do that work. <clears throat> I think previous to that, um, we had contracted with Marco, I believe, to provide some support services, but uh, we found that it was more cost effective to have somebody in-house and to kind of help with the day-to-day -day kinds of computer hardware, software issues, glitches that come up, uh, as well as help us with uh, some of the security issues that we want to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, we thought it was actually better model to have somebody in-house provide us with that. In fact, we had recommended when this gentleman took the position to, to elevate it from a half-time position to a full-time position. You'll move forward with that. Uh, yes. All in mind of trying to secure another person. Thank you. We'll move to item number six under uh, new business, and that's the Police Civil Service Commission updated eligibility list. And you have before you uh, from the uh, Police Civil Service Commission secretary, uh, I think that's Tim Everson. And uh, the eligibility roster for part-time patrol officers, uh, results of the oral examination, uh, Scott Worley, Mr. Jeremiah Nutzhorn, and Mr. Bo Herzig have been certified by the Police, Police Civil Service Commission. Your pleasure with that uh, for the part-time. Motion to, ex motion to accept that. Uh, yeah, motion to accept. Motion by Councilor Droba. Second. Second by Councilor Kraus. Discussion on the motion or the uh, part time list, eligibility list. Chief, any comments from you? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, it's just a uh, routine. This, our lists were expired. Uh, I've submitted both the full and part-time eligibility rosters as uh, presented to me from the uh, Civil Service Secretary, Tim Everson. Elected on February 5th. Please, come through. So I, I, I understand that we have the part-time officer and then the, the full-time patrol officer. And is that the same test? And if so, how how is it that... We have different names on between the two lists. I, I, I don't understand. Essentially, they're the same job. They're the same job functions, right? The knowledge bank that they would need to have to uh, right. to. Uh, and the reason that you have different names on there, obviously, the individuals that are currently part time with us aren't going to therefore be placed on a part time list. They should just go to the full time roster. Other questions or discussion? I have the question on the uh, part-time uh, eligibility list, uh, approving that question. Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. That is approved. Your pleasure then with the uh, full-time eligibility list of uh, Mr. Brian Franco, Mr. Scott Worley, and Ms. Jill Ellsbury. So moved. So seconded. Motion by <laughs> Councillor Kraus. Second by Councillor Droba to uh, approve or accept the 
eligibility list for full-time patrol officers. And, and I would understand, Chief, uh, Officer Franco and Ellsbury are already part-time? Correct. And Mr. Worley is just going to be new to the part-time position also? If you were selected and, and hired, yes. Okay. Very good. Further questions or discussion? We'll place the question on the full-time eligibility list. Acceptance? Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. And full-time eligibility list is approved. Thank you. And then we have the, uh, for council information, the rules and regulations of the Police Civil Service Commission for the city. Uh, city Administrator, you've included this in the packet. I did, Mr. Mayor. It was for council information. They had made some revisions at the same meeting that the uh, full-time and part-time patrol officer eligibility lists were prepared. And so uh, just for purposes of transparency and for council information, we wanted to provide a copy of the current rules and regulations of the Police Service uh, Civil Service Commission and how it applies to the department operations. And so it lays out uh, several pages of rules and uh, we've provided that for the council information and again that was adopted and signed on uh, February 5th. No action necessary. Uh, just a information uh, piece for the council and those uh, rules and regulations. Thank you. Any other business to come before the uh, under new business? I've got two items of concern. Please. One more. Number one is something we addressed at the last couple of meetings, and that was the blight follow up. Have letters been sent out? Mr. Mayor and Council, <clears throat> I've had conversations with the uh, building official and the uh, Fire Chief about some of the properties that uh, you and I had spoke about after the last council meeting and <clears throat> we're uh, currently working with uh, one of those property owners um, which property experienced a fire and stuff so we're resolving that and uh, we're aware of uh, violations on some of the other properties and um, um, actions have been taken on one of the other ones also Two of them, um, we haven't sent letters out, but I've asked the f police chief, I'm sorry, the uh, fire chief, and the look into um, whatever violations of the ordinance might exist, and then to prepare for um, So we've we've addressed the four properties that you've talked to or talked about, um, and then I know that um, later on the agenda here, we've had some conversations with orders that the previous city council had uh, approved and the uh, city addressing the five or six uh, properties that uh, the council had approved orders. Um, I have it under reports for the city attorney to respond. Will we have an idea or a report for our next council meeting? Uh, we can, absolutely. As I said, meetings, we got to move on this. Spring's coming and our town is a mess. And, and one of, Mr. Mayor, if I may, you know, one of the issues with blight and, and um, you know, we, we've talked about the, um, maybe there's a culture in the community that accepts uh, some of the outdoor storage issues and the blighting influences on these properties and trying to address, and it's clearly a, a concern of the city council, so we're trying to address those. Um, you know, you've identified four properties for me to address specifically, but um, there's many more than that. And, um, you know, I've communicated uh, our concerns as a city with the Economic Development Committee of the Chamber of Commerce, which represents the business community share our concerns with blight and, and, and people in uh, leadership positions in the chamber recognize some of those issues too so we're trying to address it holistically and um, it, you know it's been somewhat difficult to prioritize those issues and we've tried to do that more on the residential side with the orders that the city council has approved uh, also through our periodic inspections that again the uh,
Okay, second item, I had a, a telephone call from one of the residents in my ward concerned about the deer population in International Falls, and his main concern was South International Falls in the area that I live in. There, there are a lot of, of deer that basically keep multiplying, if you want to say that, and that's what deer do. And uh, my understanding is that this was addressed some time ago at a former meeting, is that correct? Yes. And what was the outcome of that? Uh, the, the council uh, had uh, not approved um, any areas um, for uh, under zoning to, uh, to allow uh, deer hunting in the city. And so I think at this point, uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, City Administrator. The uh, in the proposed zoning changes that are forthcoming as part of the comprehensive plan, there are several areas where uh, deer hunting could take place um, within the city if approved by the City Council. Yes, Mr. Mayor. To <clears throat> expand on that, the comprehensive plan I think uh, we had mapped and designated six or seven areas in the city that were relatively rural in nature and separate from residential housing units that um, where we could designate uh, hunting zones for deer and uh, then we would have to adopt an ordinance through the zoning ordinance or through a separate ordinance to allow deer hunting um, within those designated zones. So. Um, We've, that's that's part and parcel to the comprehensive plan and the and the zoning ordinance unless we do it as a separate ordinance that uh, we're working with our consultants on and you know, we're really hoping the we're overdue on getting the comprehensive plan completed. Uh, we had recently sent the housing study that was completed and presented in in mid December to our consultant to incorporate the recommendations from that housing plan in the housing section of the comprehensive plan. So. Um, also updating the areas that are proposed for future action, and then uh, we're upgrading the trails and um, park system map in there as well. Is it? And we were intending to have it done in December of uh, 17. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, so this is another thing that we have to get rolling on. We're already two, two years behind at least. Well, a year, uh, going on two years. And I, I guess this this person has a legitimate concern, and I would like to see something moving and moving quick. That's gross. Is there currently an ordinance against feeding deer in city limits? I know the DNR doesn't want you to feed deer because of CWD issues. I could probably point out 10 to 15 properties in town where I know there are, they are actively feeding deer, um, which is congregating these populations, especially with the snow. Um, Chief Maston, have we had a, a number of car deer incidents this winter, or is it, is it up, is it down, is it normal? I'm putting you on the spot and I apologize for that. I would have to say it's normal. It's, it's normal. It's, um, winter time doesn't have anything to do with it. It's your more than usual. Well, if you drive down 19th Street, you're dodging deer every night. Yes, 19th Street and Shorewood are, uh, and then over by Stenberg are all fun locations to drive at night because the deer are everywhere. It's an item of concern. Rightly so, thank you. Um, earlier in the meeting, at the under the approval of the agenda, we also have uh, an addition to the agenda, and that was to approve the travel expenses for the city council and administrator to uh, testify before the House Tax Committee. And I'm wondering if we shouldn't expand that to both the House and Senate because that will likely be coming up in the next uh, two or three weeks for that also. Uh, and we need to testify um, on that, so we're open to a motion at this time. So moved. Motion by Councillor Kraus to uh, approve the travel expenses for City Council and Administrator to testify before the House and Senate Tax Committees on the local sales tax. 
Second by Councillor Drova. Discussion? And, and uh, if you saw in the mayor's report, uh, uh, that, that is coming up next Monday um, before the uh, tax committee in the house. And so uh, the city administrator and I spent a good share of today uh, working on a, uh, a presentation for the uh, for that hearing. Do we have to? Um, sometime 6, 6 p.m. that evening, Monday evening. Other questions or discussion? I would then call the question to approve the travel expenses. Aye. 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 Yes, motion is carried. Travel expenses are approved. Thank you. Nothing further under new business. We will move to reports of the board's committees and department heads. City Administrator. Mr. Mayor, I don't have much to convey other than I will just make the statement that I've received a request from the uh, Executive Director of the North Cooch Area Sanitary District, um, whom had provided a copy of the uh, inflow and infiltration uh, agreement to me for review and had wanted the, our comments back on that uh, by today, quite frankly. Uh, I just got them less than two weeks ago. and. And I, I think uh, just given the significance of the agreement that it, it needs further scrutiny and input from perhaps the city attorney as well as the, um, the city engineer and perhaps the public works committee. So um, I was just drawing that to the, your attention as the chair of the public works committee. So when we have our next meeting, we probably need to review that and make sure you're comfortable with um, our response back on that on that agreement. Other than that, I don't have any uh, anything for council information. Thank you. City Attorney. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Council. I was out of town for a week in a trial in Duluth uh, since our last meeting and then was have been in court solid today. I actually had 55 city cases this morning, uh, which is a new record for the nine years I, I've been city attorney for, uh, for one day. Um, so we're very busy. Uh, um, Chief Masson's officers are doing a great job keeping me busy. Um, I, so as a result of that, I don't have an answer yet um, from Keith Knable uh, on the STS crew and whether or not they can do the garden thing. Uh, but I will, and I'm actually uh, in court in Burdette tomorrow and here tomorrow afternoon, but I will try to get to him on Thursday. Uh, and so I'll have a report back at the next council meeting the first Monday in March. And then... Uh, I'll uh, also try and have a report for the council in terms of with maybe some time frames that we're looking at for these cases that we have in court uh, and hopefully by then we'll have hearing dates uh, and then the time deadlines beyond the hearing that they can appeal uh, so we'll be able to know when our crews can start tearing those places down but hopefully that will be happening this spring early on that's all I have Thank you. Questions for the uh, city attorney? May I? Please. If we do win and we do tear it down, who foots the bill for that? Well, we can we can attach the cost to the taxes. Um, but they, we, we've had a program where if they will consent, uh, uh, then we've a cost. Uh, but where they require us, or they don't cooperate and require us to go through the process of a city council order and then going to court with it and then we tack those costs the costs of the of the demolition we not aware that we've ever tried to actually factor in administrative costs like attorney costs and those kinds of things but I'll look at that and see everything back on to that but it go, goes on there taxes thank you other questions thank you uh, Chief Maston. Mr. Mayor, I don't, I don't have a report this evening, but I would uh, like to take an opportunity to again thank uh, PCA for their generous donations last night. Uh, you were at the Elks for our best presentation. Um, I want to say there, were, I wish I had the numbers in front of me, but I, I believe there were probably 11 vests given out last night, uh, active shooter equipment uh, given out to the police department as well as the sheriff's office and two of our paramedics so uh, that, that equipment is not uh, not cheap 
and it was a it was a fantastic donation by uh, PCA, and I just wanted to publicly thank them and let the council know about that donation. Very nice. It was a great presentation. Uh, a number of folks uh, spoke there that, uh, and uh, you're absolutely correct. Uh, certainly, it was wonderful to uh, to see that many vests and and equipment uh, for our p police officers as well as sheriff's deputies and the uh, our uh, paramedics. So, a wonderful donation by Packaging Corporation of America. They uh, they do more than just make paper. So. Mr. Mayor, Please. Uh, in that regard, we should have a motion from the City Council accepting the donation from PCA and uh, we can itemize the uh, donated items in the minutes for approval at the next meeting. Motion by Councilor Droba to accept the uh, donation from Packaging Corporation of America for the uh, active shooter vests and equipment. Second. Second, Second by Councilor Droba. Uh, Councilor Bowler, excuse me. Discussion. Question. Aye. 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 Vote yes. Motion is carried, and letter of acceptance will be sent. Thank you. Chief Manasa, please. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, the report for tonight is for the month of January. Uh, we had five department call-outs. Um, four were city responses, one was in the rural. Uh, you'll see a couple of additional ones under the city side. Those were inspections done by myself or the assistant chief, but uh, the, the full department call-outs were one commercial fire, uh, w which was a smoke scare, and then one additional commercial fire, which actually was a fire. Uh, we had a CO call, a uh, furnace inspection, and two chemical smells. Uh, on the rural side, we also had one structure fire in January. Uh, the monthly meeting and training was on the 17th of January, where we had a regular business meeting, a relief meeting, and uh, training on the new fire truck. So we actually put that into service as well that night. After we completed the training, that was put into service and became our first out truck. So that was a good night for us. Uh, ambulance on the month of January, uh, 87 911 calls, 55 transfers for a total of 142 runs. Uh, compared to last year, that's down a little bit from a total of 167. Monthly meeting and training was on the 8th uh, with a regular business meeting and then we had uh, skill stations that we went through with the, the ambulance folks on that. Questions I can answer? Questions for Chief Manasa? Great report. Thank you. It's a good activity. Thank you. Thank you. Also under uh, reports of the uh, department heads, you have uh, the written report of the Public Works Department by uh, the uh, Public Works uh, Director, Gary Skullman. Are there any uh, questions or discussions with regard to uh, what appeared to be a very, very good year of uh, activity? With no money. Well, there was maintenance money, but... But we did we did uh, spend uh, uh, out of our PI out of the permanent improvement fund improvements on about 12 blocks of city streets. But I think uh, the uh, the amount of activity that the public works department, water and sewer, and street uh, are into is uh, always significant. Any other questions or thoughts with regard to that uh, report? Thank the uh, Public Works Director for that. Very well done. We'll move to uh, reports of Mayor, Council, Committees, Boards, and Commissions. Councilor Droba. I don't have a, a report so much, but I, uh, listening to uh, the City Administrator speak about uh, the information that we received from North uh, Kuchiching Sanitary District, I think we should have a public works 
meeting relatively soon to to discuss and take a look at that information. And uh, secondly, um, I don't sit on that committee, but I do know that uh, there's been a handful of items that Councillor Deach has brought up that need to be looked at uh, through land use and legislation. And definitely one of those issues is how we handle uh, blighted structures. Um, there's been a couple of draft ordinances that uh, have came out, one uh, supplied by the League of Minnesota Cities, and the second one was uh, going to be supplied by the city administrator, and I think that we should definitely look at that. Um, another thing that I think that uh, we should be looking at for land use and legislation would be um, how in the future are we going to continue handling um, our blighted structures and tearing them down? We talked about it at our economic development meeting that if we're tearing down structures, it, it almost makes sense for the cost that we're putting in that we should retain the property. Um, maybe that's something that needs to be looked at for uh, land use and legislation because if we're going to try to do anything with housing and we have no residential properties to do anything with housing. I think that's something that we should be looking at through land use and legislation. And the last item, which uh, is probably going to be one of the most bizarre things that I've ever said <coughs> at the City Council, and I've said some weird stuff, is uh, I think we need to look at um, coming up with an idea of where we would zone the sale of um, recreational marijuana in the city of International Falls. Uh, one of the con conversations that's been happening at the League of Minnesota Cities is if it becomes legal and you don't have anything on your books of where it would be able to be sold, anything would be a valid place to sell um, marijuana. And I think that we're a, a small community that has, um, we can see it through our apprehensions uh, through our city that we have a drug problem as it is and if we don't have something designated of where uh, a dispensary would be it could be right downtown Main Street of International Falls and I don't know if any if, if that is an issue for anybody else here but if uh, if it does become legal I don't want it to be a Main Street business so I think that that's something we should be looking at um, we kind of went into a situation with that when Sunday liquor came into play two weeks before it became legal, we were scrambling to try to figure out what our city ordinances were gonna be. If, uh, if marijuana doesn't become legal in the state of Minnesota, that's fine. We have it on the books, you can't, you can't sell it anyway. So I just think it's something we should be looking at and preparing ourselves for uh, before we're scrambling at the end. Um, so those are at least three things that I think that we should be looking at in land use and legislation. Um, and I do believe that we should be having a public works meeting to discuss some of those other issues uh, with the I and I and the information that we've been receiving. So, thank you. Yep. Further uh, thoughts from council with regard to uh, committees or boards and commissions? Uh, with regard to the uh, to the marijuana, uh, the chiefs of police have taken a position on that. Did you know for the the state uh, board? They're down there, I, and I obviously believe they're advocating against it. Um, but uh, like Councilor Grobus said, I think folks are starting to think forward, forward thinking, in, in case it is passed. But uh, yeah. Right now, I think that the chiefs are not in support of legal marijuana, but down there participating in the discussions. Well, it'll be uh, certainly be interesting. I guess uh, I think it might be uh, the, the beginning of uh, folks uh, using drugs more when uh, when you start off on on marijuana, but. I don't know that. I'm not a professional to know that. But, uh, please. It, it should be noted that the use is currently legal for medicinal purposes, so it may behoove us to have a dispensary um, legislation written or ordinance for the city. It is already legal in the state of Minnesota with a doctor's prescription. To get it from? 
Hibbing, from Hibbing has a dispensary. Hibbing has a dispensary. It, it probably we're already behind is where I'm going with that. It is already legal. There are people in this community that have prescriptions and are procuring it somewhere. So we are already behind. And they're not. And the prescriptions it comes in a different form. It's not a bag of marijuana that they're sitting at home smoking. True, but it's but it's already a product that is legal. It might it would fit that there's nothing that says you couldn't open a medical dispensary, as far as I'm aware, in the city of International Falls. Except that so, they're picked for they're picked from the state. The state picks the city in which oh, Right, but I'm just saying if if there, somebody was to apply and, and go through the process, there's nothing we don't have an ordinance on the books that would regulate such a business. So we are somewhat already behind, in my opinion. Okay, further uh, discussion? If not, uh, let's see, uh, move to the audience, and we don't have anyone in the audience that has questions or discussion. Uh, the correspondence, uh, say, Administrator, with regard to uh, Sand Creek and their announcement that they have a new subsidiary. Mr. Mayor, actually, uh, Sand Creek, which is our employee assistance program, <clears throat> is a subsidiary to All One Health um, as of January 1st, 2019. So this is just a notification uh, to us as one of their clients explaining uh, how that's going to move forward. They're not changing their name. Um, I think it, it basically goes to the uh, owners uh, looking at uh, succession planning, and they, they've uh, agreed... Uh, as of January 1st to become a subsidiary to All One Health. So uh, that's just for council information. All right, thank you. Anything further to come before the council at this time? Not the uh, next uh, city council meeting is Monday, March the 4th, 2019 at 4.30 p.m. We'll stand adjourned. Thank you.